When you send a file to your 3D printer, are you sending it over Wi-Fi through a cloud to your Bamboo Lab printer? Or are you more like me and using SneakerNet? I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Now, I'm sure I probably caught some people with that sneaker net comment. It's really just a kind of a slang term or joke term for transferring data by walking over, loading it on an SD card or USB drive, and then putting into another computer or printer or whatever it's going to be. It's sneakers, your shoes, your tennis shoes. You're literally walking from one point to another. So it's not going through internet, through a cloud or anything. You're literally the sneaker net. You're the person transferring it. But for years, that's what we did. In fact, prior to that, you actually had to connect your printer through a USB cable. So your computer had to be near your printer and sometimes stay connected. So just going to an SD card was a step up. Now, some printers, you could send the file through the USB cable and then disconnect the cable because it would transfer to the SD card. But like I said, eventually we got to the point where we could just pull out the SD card and put it in and then print. So Wi-Fi came out a little later on some machines. I know Prusa had an add-on you could do. There was other machines like FlashForge had the Polar Cloud connection. So you could actually design something in Tinkercad, and you could send it through the Polar Cloud, and the Polar Cloud would slice it and then send it to the FlashForge printer. And some of the FlashForge printers still have this. It's... I've used it. In fact, I did it on the 5M Pro in a video recently. So that was through the cloud. But it really became popular to Wi-Fi, to all these, even the smaller printers, when Bamboo Lab printers came out. Now, originally, I had a big CME CNC printer, and it used Wi-Fi, and it worked really, really well. But here in my shop, when I came to here, I just don't have the best Wi-Fi here. It's intermittent kind of thing. I still haven't fully figured it out. But it's not a problem up in my office, but further in the back, where a lot of the printers are, it's just not as good of a signal. So I would get mixed bag results from that. So I went back to the sneaker net, and that's been working fine. But when Bamboo Lab sent me the X1C way back several years ago, I used Wi-Fi. I didn't even know you could use an SD card. I found out later that you can pop out the SD card on these machines and do the sneaker net method. The only difference is it's not hot swappable. It's like a computer where you have to eject the USB drive or the SD card. That wasn't a problem with the old machines. You could just pull that SD card in and out. And I've actually done it on these machines by accident and it still worked, but it's risky. So you actually have to go into the menu into settings and then find the SD card and then eject it before you can pull this SD card out and then put it on your computer. And that's where a lot of people said I was just ancient. So I wanted to see if that was true. So I did a poll both on X and on YouTube. And what I found is there's a difference between the two, but it's anywhere from like 25% to 35% of the users out there still use the sneaker net method where they actually take the USB drive from their Prusa or the SD card from their printer, and they do what I did. Just put it on the computer and then pull it out, put it in the printer. And it works fine for me because I have a portable laptop. I do all my design and slicing, get everything set, and I just take this over to the printer. Now, many times the printer is sitting there with a print on it or the test strips that I forgot to remove. So I'll get that off. I'll clean the bed if I notice that it's you know, got fingerprints or something on it, so I know the print's going to be successful. I also check the filament, make sure I've got enough filament for the print. You know, if I'm going from a, to a five or six hour print, I want to make sure I got enough filament in there. And is it the right type, right color that I slice for PTG and I've got it PLA loaded or vice versa? So I'm coming to check the printer out anyway. So is it that big a deal to pull the SD card out and send the file to it? And a lot of times, I will slice multiple things. If I'm testing some settings, I will say I just want to try different layer heights and see which one is worth it. I could slice at a 0.16, a 0 0.2, a 0.24, a 0.28, and I'll do all four of those on the SD card or the USB drive, put it in there. So after the print is done, I don't have to Wi-Fi anything. I'll pull the print off, 
and then I'll go in here and select the next file and print it until I've got my four prints next to each other that I can compare and figure out which one is the better. And I never have to Wi-Fi to it. I don't have to SD card it again. So that's what I do a lot of times. That's why I test slicing settings by doing multiple files at the same time. Now many of these new printers have cameras so you can check it on your phone, you can check it on the app, you can see if it's you know printing right from a distance, you could stop it if it's you know, gonna fail. So that's a disadvantage to me not really connecting. And I understand that, but in most cases, I'm not doing that anyway. Now this office is about a mile away from my house, so Sometimes I'll stop, we'll go out to dinner or whatever, I'll stop, pop in if I got something running, I'll check on it. And I found failures that I could have fixed a lot sooner with the app on my phone. But it's just not that often. And that's why some people will send to the Wi-Fi and they don't even worry about the first layer because the first layer is a lot more reliable on these than it ever was on the Ender 3. So I get that that's part of the advantage as well that they can send it. So I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. It's just what works for you. But in my case, I still like going to the printer. I still like loading on the ST card. Maybe I am old timer, maybe I am old fashioned, but I still like having that control. And then what I can actually do, if I've got multiple printers that are the same printer, like multiple A1 minis, I can take the SD card, put all those files on my computer, and then get the other SD cards and copy those to the SD cards of the other printers, pop them all in, and now all of them, have the same files. So if I'm doing something that I'm printing a lot of, or I may want to come back and reprint, I know on any one of these printers, I can print it just by walking up, finding it, and pressing print without having to, you know, resend or anything. That's another advantage that I find with putting it directly on the SD card. I have complete control of what is on that thing without having to wonder, did I send it to this one or send it to that one? That's part of the reason I do it as well. And another advantage to SneakerNet is I don't have to worry about internet security. There, there's no internet being used with SneakerNet. And some people have been concerned because you send your file through the Bamboo Cloud and they do collect some data that they use, they say, for improving prints or learn from what's going on. I don't understand it. I'm into electronics and I just still don't understand all the security issues so I'd rather stay away from it. I'm perfectly fine staying off the internet with my 3D prints because this is just a tool. To me, it's, a, it's like my table saw, my drill press, my CNC machine. It's just a tool. It doesn't need to be connected to the internet all the time. The fact that it has a capability, I love it. But I'm just not really using it that much. Once in a while, I can connect it. And then, yeah, then I can monitor it on my phone or Wi-Fi to it. But it's just not that often. So I like the capability, but what I pay extra for, nah, not really. But it comes with these low-cost machines now, so it's not a big deal. But I don't want to deal with all those security issues. I've seen a lot of videos of people painting horror stories, what could happen and why you need to do this or do that to protect yourself. Sneaker net's easy. I just pop it in, and I'm done. And like I said, I'm into electronics, and if you are too, you should check out our sponsor, PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is where I get all my circuit boards. You can get 10 pieces for $5, and I got low-cost assembly services. They offer single and multi-layer PCBs, flexible PCBs, assembly services, surface mount, stencils, and 3D printing and CNC. You just upload your Gerber files, tell them the quantity, what color solder mask you want, silk screen, five bucks for 10 boards plus shipping. $22.76 to my house. Need it assembled, they can do that. You can just send on the parts or a combo of it. You can do top side, bottom side, both sides. You can do a panelized, single pieces. A lot of options. Tell them what you want. They'll calculate a price. They also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. So it's a complete source if you're into electronics. So check out PCBWay.com. So in my survey, a majority of the people, almost 70%, were using the internet and the Wi-Fi method and I guess see nothing wrong with it. A smaller percentage were doing the sneaker net like I do. And some were even using Octoprint and they actually wired through a network cable to it. So it's directly wired. But those that are using the Wi-Fi, are you even concerned about the security issues or is it just something you accept? 
in today's world where Google knows everything we're doing anyway. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your continued support. I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Film It Friday.